Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this quick little tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at Spotlight in ZBrush. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into ZBrush. We're going to hit the comma key, which will get rid of our light box. We're just going to get good our simple tool and grab the polysphere 3d or the sphere 3d so we're going to make it a poly mesh Let's just drag it out I'm just left clicking and dragging out onto our desktop you can hit this button here edit to get into edit or just hit the T button gets you in and out of it let's go ahead and make sure we're in a we click this button here the make poly mesh 3d that way it becomes like a real nice object that we can turn around and do all sorts of fun things to. And let's go ahead and hit Control D to subdivide this up a little bit. And we'll do it one more time. We're now at 525,000 polygons. You want to make sure that uh, the models you're working on, especially when you're sculpting models, etc., that you've got enough uh, polygon density because the, the more dense your polygons are is the better it's going to accept color information when you're poly painting or obviously uh, color information from spotlight which is what we're, we're going to get into in just a moment by the way if you don't like the, the gradient in your background just go to document range the slider right here if you turn it down to zero it goes gray if you turn it up to one it just pulls in more of that gradient in the background here. I actually like to work without the gradient at all, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull that down to zero, and there we go. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get a color, just a base color and a base material on this. I don't like this red wax for this. I'm going to use the MAH modeling material. And we're in white, so I'm going to turn on my RGB, MRGB, which is material and RGB at once. I'm going to turn off the Z-Add because we're not sculpting on this. We're just going to be paint, painting color. I'm going to go to Color, Fill Object. It turns white because it's now filled with color and has the white material on it. I'm going to turn my Stroke to Freehand. I'm going to go up to Stroke and uh, move the mouse average slider all the way up to 15 so it's nice and smooth. I'm going to turn off Lazy Mouse. Okay, so what exactly is Spotlight? Well, Spotlight is a, a little suite of controls that are built within ZBrush that will help you when you're poly painting. Uh, you can use it for all sorts of things besides poly painting, but I primarily use it for poly painting and assisting me with certain looks and things like that. It's a great way to give you a, a quick jump on some colors as well. If I go right now, I'll just switch this to red right now. If I switch to just RGB, okay, we've got nice red, and I can just zip back and zip it back and forth, and get some red on there. Of course, I can switch it to green, get some green in there. Uh, obviously, you know, this is just a quick thing. This is a quick intro, and just quickly how we do it. I'm actually holding my shift key down and blurring the edges a little bit. But obviously this isn't very realistic. Um, of course, we're not going for some super realistic for this quick intro, but I want to show you what you can do with this. Let's say we've got color in it. We didn't actually have to have color in it, but we do right now. The way to use Spotlight is, and especially for you to get used to it, is click on your texture and click import. Okay, so let's say we'll go to, say, Bullfrog and click on it select the bullfrog and then select this button right here if you if you select it you can see it says add to spotlight so let's go ahead and add that to our spotlight and there we go hit comma again to get rid of the light box and as you can see it brings up the photo of this bullfrog and this is the control dial built within spotlight okay each one, if you want to know what each one does, you can just hold your mouse over each icon and it'll tell you what it is. This is Rotate, Scale, Pin Spotlight, Spotlight Radius, Opacity, Fade, Tile Proportional, and it goes on. You just hold each one over and you can see what it can do and, and, and how it's going to be able to help you. Usually for, for poly painting, I use uh, Opacity a lot. 
if I scale it, to, if I'm actually rotating this counterclockwise, you can see that the object, the polysphere, can be seen through much easier through the photograph with this, okay? If I turn the uh, opacity back, crank it up, then I don't see, obviously, the model at all. So I like to crank it down a little bit. Now, there's a difference, by the way, between uh, opacity and fade. Opacity will allow me to project this image in color detail onto the sphere at 100% or whatever. Right now, the intensity is 100%. If I adjust that down, it'd be 12%. Fade, however, actually, if I fade it, it actually fades the photograph itself. So if I try to apply it, it won't come on very strong. Anyway, I'll show you uh, that in a second. We'll just go ahead and do opacity. We're going to drop it down. Okay, so let's see. This way we can now see, see to our background. If I hit Z, okay, there we go. Now you can see that there's that right now I'm seeing a little bit of the radius this is the spotlight radius uh, that you can see so I, you can see uh, parts of the image based on how big or how small the radius is so I'm gonna go back to Z and find the spot uh, the spotlight radius we're gonna crank that up now if I hit Z see it's bigger we see more of the photograph itself okay now this is a projection only all right so if I click, see how it projects that image onto the sphere? Perfectly, too, by the way. If I rotate this image around, I can then continue that around. Because again, it's projection, so it's really based on where your model is. If I zoom the model out, for instance, and then paint it, I'm getting a big swath of that image. I zoom it out even more, I get even a bigger swath of it, okay? If I hit Z, I'm going to go over to the spotlight radius again. I'm going to crank it all the way up and hit Z. Z is to get into and out of spotlight, okay? All right, shift Z turns it on and turns it off. Merely the, the idea that you can use the spotlight to paint. Shift Z turns it off. Now it's still there, but right now because we're out of the spotlight suite, I can now go back to painting on the sphere itself. If I hit Shift Z, I'm back in spotlight and can paint that out. If I hit Z, I'm in the controls. So that's the difference between Z which gets me into the controls, and Shift Z, which merely turns on Spotlight and allows me to paint. If I turn off Shift Z again, like I said, we can now paint in the different colors as we want. The nice thing about this is once that color has been applied to your sphere, at any point you can now sample the colors here. If I hit C, so you can see it just changed that color over here. If I hit C here, it's that green. If I hit C here, it's that tan color. C, it's that, it, and it matches. It's a, it's a per pixel basis. So you have to make sure you really get on there. There's that dark gray black. And you can use that then to poly paint. If I turn my intensity down a little bit, I can then start to poly paint that in, okay? Also, if I hold my shift, as you can see, I can blur out the photographic information on Spotlight, okay? Also, if I hold my uh, uh, shift Z down and then go into Z into the actual um, photograph into Spotlight itself, I can also sample these colors now. If I hit C, C, C. If you're in the control panel on the spotlights, you can actually sample outside of that area. So it comes in really handy. So go back, I just went back to Shift Z. And this is a great way to mix in a, both hand painting and photographic information onto a model. Okay, I'm just gonna put some of that in there. 
There we go. Also, with some of the controls I like to use is scale. Scale is a great one. You can scale your, your image in or image out. Okay, let's scale it up for instance. All right, now, by the way, when you want to move your photograph around, do not click inside the orange. Inside the orange is merely moving the control dial itself. If you click within this ring, but still outside the orange, that's when you're actually moving the photograph around because there will be times when you might scale a picture up, but you want just this area, so you can actually pull this more towards the center. Hit Shift Z. Oops, sorry. And then there we go. And then we can just paint that color in at 100%. Okay, let's say we get that in there really nicely. Shift Z to get out of it. You can now sample. I'll sample this color. I'll hit V to switch. And I'll sample this color. I'll get into my color spray with Alpha 7. And now I can adjust my intensity. And I, and I can go for painting in some areas. Sort of start to blend it out into something else. Let's say into something a little bit darker. We're going to hit V to switch some of that to paint that out. I'm going to hit C. I want to get a little bit of that. I'll scale my brush down using the brackets on the fly. And again, it's a great way to just start working in your different details. I'm going to hit C for that. Scale it down. And again, there you go. And you can start blending and do whatever you need to do with that and then render that out as a map and just go from there. So this has just been a real quick intro into Spotlight in ZBrush. This has been 3dmotive.com. I hope this has been fun for you. And my name is Stephen G. Wells.